to access free topic sheets, worksheets, or to book an online class, visit ilearneasy.co.uk. Matter. Matter is the stuff that makes up everything in the universe. Matter is made up of atoms. An atom consists of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons are positive. Neutrons are neutral. Electrons are negative. Solids, liquids, and gases are types of matter. The particles in each are arranged differently. Solids. Solids have a definite shape, definite volume, and definite mass. This is because the particles in a solid are packed very closely together in a regular pattern. So the particles in a solid have very low kinetic energy. The strong forces, called bonds, attract the particles towards each other. Therefore, the particles can vibrate, but they can't move from place to place. The shape of a solid doesn't change unless it's broken, cut, or squashed into a different shape. Examples of solids are a table, a chair, a pan. Liquids. Liquids have a definite volume but no definite shape. This is because the particles are close together, but they are arranged in a random way. This means that the particles are able to move around each other slightly. The bonds between the particles are strong enough to keep the particles close together, but they're weak enough to allow them to move around each other. Liquids are also very hard to compress, and they can take the shape of the container that it's in. For example, a bottle. The volume of a liquid stays the same. Examples of liquids are water and petrol. Gas. Gases have no definite shape or volume. The particles in a gas. Have a lot of space between them and are arranged in a random way. The strength of the bonds between the atoms are weak. Therefore, the particles are free to move in any direction, and they have high kinetic energy. A gas changes shape according to the container that it's in. The particles in a gas spread out to fill large containers. When the gas is compressed. The space between the particles is reduced to fit small containers. Examples of gases are oxygen and carbon dioxide. There are three states in which matter can exist: solid, liquid, and gas. Matter can change in different ways. There are six ways. In which matter can change. Now let's go through the six changes of matter. When a solid turns into a liquid, it's called melting. For example, ice turns into water when it's left at room temperature. When a liquid changes into a solid, it's called freezing. For example, water changes into ice when it's cold enough to freeze. When a liquid changes into a gas, this is called evaporation. For example, water changes into steam when it's boiled in a kettle. When a gas changes into a liquid, this is called condensation. For example, water vapor changes into liquid water. When moving into a warm place from a cold place, for example, when you have foggy windows. When a gas changes into a solid, this is called deposition. For example, when water vapor changes into ice, this can happen directly 
when it's very cold and can usually happen on windows during the winter. When a solid changes into a gas, this is called sublimation. For example, snow or ice can change directly into water vapour without melting first into water. This can happen directly when it's very cold and can usually happen on windows during the winter. Different materials allow different amounts of light to pass through them. Depending on the level of light allowed through, the material can be transparent, translucent or opaque. Transparent Transparent refers to a material that allows all or most light to travel through. It's possible to see clearly through transparent materials. For example, glass. Translucent Translucent refers to a material that allows some light to pass through. It's not possible to see through translucent materials. For example, tissue paper. Opaque Opaque refers to a material that blocks all light passing through. It's not possible to see through opaque materials at all. For example, wood. Opaque materials create shadows when they block light. Materials All materials have different properties. We can group materials according to their properties. Understanding the properties of materials helps us to make decisions about the type of materials we should use for particular jobs. In this video, we will learn about the five properties that materials can have. Hardness, solubility, transparency, conductivity of electricity and conductivity of heat. Remember that some materials can have only one of these properties or they can have more than one. Hardness. Hardness is a measure of how difficult it is to break, to scratch or to bend something. Hardness is important when something needs to be very tough. Soft materials are required when softness and flexibility is important. A rock is an example of a hard material and a pillow is an example of a soft material. Solubility Solubility is the ability to be dissolved. Some materials are able to dissolve in water and some aren't. Soluble materials dissolve and are usually used in food and in some medical products. Insoluble materials can't dissolve. An example of a soluble material is sugar. An example of an insoluble material is sand. Transparency Transparency is the ability to allow light to pass through. Some materials are see-through and some are not see-through. Transparent materials are see-through because they allow all or most of the light to pass through. Opaque materials aren't see-through because they block all of the light. A window is an example of a transparent material. Wood is an example of an opaque material. Conductivity of electricity. This refers to the ability to allow electricity to flow through. Some materials allow electricity to flow through and some don't. Electrical conductors allow electricity to flow through them and they're usually used when electricity is needed to be transported from one place to another. For example, copper wires. Electrical insulators prevent the flow of electricity through them. For example, plastic. Conductivity of heat. This is the ability to allow heat to flow through. Some materials allow heat to flow through and some don't. 
Thermal conductors allow heat to travel through them and are used when heat is needed to be transported to another place. For example, metal saucepans are very good heat conductors. Thermal insulators don't allow heat to travel through them. For example, rubber. Thermal conductors and thermal insulators are also known as heat conductors or heat insulators. Reversible changes, irreversible changes. In this video, we will learn about reversible and irreversible changes. Reversible changes means that any changes made can be reversed. Changing states of matter are always reversible. For example, chocolate melts when it's warm and it sets hard when it's cold. Boiling water evaporates as steam and then it condenses back as water. So these are examples of reversible changes. So even when the state of matter is changed, it can still be changed back to its original. When different materials are mixed together, they can usually be separated again. There are four processes for separating mixtures. When a solid is mixed with a liquid, the process can be reversed by filtering. This process consists of moving a mixture through a filter. This can usually be a paper filter containing small holes. When the mixture is poured through the filter, the liquid passes through the filter and the solid does not pass the filter. Therefore, we can separate out the solid and the liquid. When solids are mixed together, the process can be reversed by sieving. A sieve is a tool with a net attached that has holes. Sieves can come in different sizes. When the mixture is placed on the sieve, the smaller solids pass through the sieve, helping to separate out larger solids from smaller solids. When a soluble solid is mixed with a liquid, it will dissolve in the liquid to form a solution. For example, when salt is dissolved in water, it forms a salt solution. The process of dissolving can be reversed by evaporation and condensation. Evaporation consists of heating the salt solution. This leaves behind the solid salt and the water turns into water vapour. Condensation consists of cooling the water as it evaporates. Irreversible changes. Irreversible changes means the changes can't be undone and a new material is formed. Now let's look at some examples. Burning. An example of this is burning wood. When wood is burned, it becomes ashes and cannot be changed back into wood. Rusting metal. When a metal is exposed to oxygen and water for long enough, a reaction called oxidization occurs. This causes the metal to rust. Heating food. For example, cooking an egg in a pan. The cooked egg can't be reversed back to a raw egg. Mixed ingredients. For example, if you're making bread, you'll have to mix all of the ingredients to make dough. Once the ingredients are all mixed together, they can't be separated, as now the ingredients have permanently changed. So these are all examples of irreversible changes. Once a change occurs, we can't reverse back to the original material because now a new material has formed. Light is a form of energy. Darkness is when there is little or no light. A light source is something that makes light. Light sources can be natural or artificial. Natural light sources exist by nature. Examples of natural light sources are the sun, 
fire and lightning. Artificial light sources require a supply of energy. This usually comes from mains electricity, batteries or chemical reactions. Examples of artificial light sources are a lamp, a torch, matches. Light travels very fast in a straight line. Light can be reflected off surfaces of objects around it. This reflection of light from an object is what allows us to see. Light reflects from a surface at the same angle that it hits. It's important to know how light travels as this helps us understand how objects are seen. Light can travel directly from the source to the eye which allows us to see the object. For example, light made by fire. Objects that don't produce light themselves can be seen because they reflect light from another source. When the light enters the eye, a message is sent to the brain and the brain interprets what it's seeing. For example, light travels from the sun to the tree. It's reflected and then travels into the eye. Although light can only travel in a straight line, it's possible to use reflective objects such as mirrors. This allows light to be reflected, changing the direction which makes it possible to see things that would normally be out of sight. An example of this is a periscope. A periscope is a piece of equipment used in submarines to see what is happening above the water. The mirrors used in a periscope reflect the light travelling through it and reaches the eye. So this allows them to see anything that's above the water.